This episode brought to you by Butterball Turkey, the turkey that probably won't try to kill or fuck you. Gobble gobble, motherfuckers. We're watching Thanks Killing, and you're listening to Miss Cass Commentary. You're listening to Miss Cass Commentary. Where two guys have seen way too many movies and have way too much time on their hands. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. All out of bubblegum. Now here's your hosts, Joe Finley and Todd Murray. Hey everybody, happy Thanksgiving to our U.S. friends, and welcome to Miscast Commentary. I'm Joe Finley. And I'm Carrie Finley. My beautiful wife is joining me for a special holiday episode for a couple of reasons. One, this movie we discovered together while on Netflix, while we were Netflixing and chilling, and by that I mean literally like she leans on me and falls asleep inevitably. But the other reason is that our dear Todd Tebow the Sailor Murray is still at sea. He is missing out. When I told him he was missing out on this awesome situation we've got here, his exact answer was, fuck. I'll post that on the website. It's pretty funny. And we got a great one for you this week, guys. We are listening to or watching. We're watching. You should be watching, too. And I'm going to prove to you that we you should be watching this. Thanks, Killing an amazingly fun movie, a uh, cult classic. And this was actually the 10th anniversary is this, this year. year. It is, it is 10 years old as of this year. Uh, we discovered it a, a few years ago, like probably like five or six years ago. Oh, uh, at least. But uh, yeah. So, but the best part isn't just the movie. The best part is guys, I took a swing and I actually made contact. We got Jordan Downey the director of Thanks Killing, and the voice of Turkey. And before we even start this movie, usually we get in, before we talk about the movie really at all, we usually press play. But this time I'm not going to. And here's why. If you have not seen this movie yet, I'm about to play a clip from my interview with Jordan Downey, and then you are going to stop this podcast and go watch the movie or get access to it so you can watch it along with this movie. Okay? We are discussing what's about to happen in the very first scene in this movie, and here's what Jordan had to say about that. Wanda Lust's breasts appear on the screen. Yep. And for a second. That's uh, that's exactly it. And I mean, again, you're still like you're in college or just coming out like just Yeah. yeah so No, I'm in we are in college. Yeah. So that was a, that's like a special, you know, set of balls uh, on a on a college student making a feature film to go. We're going to open with breasts and we're going to cast a porn star to do it. So how did you uh, reach out to yeah. her first off? Uh, I mean, well, so the interesting thing about that opening scene is that we didn't shoot that when yeah, cuz we made Thanks Killing during our summer break between our junior and senior year in college. Mm-hmm. And it was we shot it in 11 days back in Ohio. But we did not have the opening she- uh, scene shot yet. It was my brother. I give him credit, my brother Mike, for having the idea of opening up on a nipple, basically, <laughs> because he was just like, you guys have already made the most ridiculous movie ever. Just go- just give people exactly, like, let people know in the first frame of this movie what you're getting in for. And we thought it was brilliant because he was right. Like, that is the best way to tell people exactly what you're what kind of a movie you're in for. Mm-hmm. You know, this is meant to be a total joke. So uh, we filmed the, the scene with Wanda Lust in California once we came back to school. At, I don't even remember when it was, but months after the fact. Yeah. And we found her just on Craigslist. We just were looking for somebody who was willing to do topless. I mean, if I had that original post, I probably would read it out loud. It would be hilarious. But um the it was just we were posting on Craigslist looking for you know actress adult film actress or somebody willing to be topless. We didn't care if they were a porn star. It didn't that didn't matter to us. And we maybe got two responses, but I think it was we only got one, and it was Wanda, and she was game for it. And 
compared to the other stuff that she does, this was tame. So it wasn't a big deal. So this is where we start off. That is your starting frame of reference for this movie. This movie is an hour and six minutes long and 42 seconds if you've got the time. But take the time to go find this movie. It is easy to find. Go watch it. We will wait. We don't actually have to wait, right? No, we don't have to actually wait, but I agree. They need to watch this movie. Okay. They absolutely need to watch this movie. And now I bring you to this movie. And the only way we start these movies, even if you're on a trip to Fan High, is to press play. All right. So right off the bat, as you heard Jordan say, this movie was made uh, while they were in college between <laughs> between years in college. He went back to his home state of Ohio, brought some film equipment with him. The total budget of this movie was thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, the year is 1621, the olden days. Um, Jordan uh, led on to me that originally this was supposed to be some kind of uh, Native American shaman or something of the like that was uh, that he was chasing, and then it was the idea, like he said, his brother uh, came up with this idea, and it was hilarious. I remember just sitting here with my wife. Uh, we discovered this on Netflix, like I said, f- several years ago. And it just so happened that like we were just scrolling through and we're always looking for like a crazy horror movie or something like that. And Carrie saw this cover and literally just started saying, play it, play it, play it. Like there was no, what is this about? Just play it. Yeah. A, a good B movie that's, that's <laughs> funny is, is, is fantastic. And this takes the cake. I, I <laughs> love this movie. Oh, absolutely. And like, what other ones would you consider amongst like your faves that we've discovered together over the years? Uh, Blood Diner. Mm. Blood Diner is so good. I discovered that movie with Todd. Actually, we've done the episode about that one. Yeah. Oh, there is Turkey, the wonderful murder. That puppet actually was built by Jordan Downey and performed by Jordan Downey as well. Um, he he goes into detail in our interview. I, I will tell you next week we're going to play the entire interview. It's about an hour and a half, and you're going to hear all a ton more about this movie that we don't we couldn't squeeze in with the clips in that today. And you're going to hear more about the rest of his career, including uh, a time when he interned under Wes Craven. So there's a lot. He's got a really interesting uh, background. That's and, cool, actually. I, mm-hmm. I love Wes Craven. Oh, God, yeah. And he's got a great love for the same kind of movies that we love. He loves Critters and he loves like the 80s. And you'll, you'll hear a lot about it. Uh So this uh, music, I really enjoyed this music. It's uh, kind of... An, um, an homage to like the simplistic, uh, like the John Carpenter style or something like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, Troy Smith, who does the special effects makeup, also uh, helped build uh, some puppets for later movies that they did, including Thanks Thanks Killing Three. There is no Thanks Killing Two. There's only it goes from one to three. How do you and- skip two? Because the whole movie is about him chasing down and killing people for throwing out the last copy of two. <laughs> we need to watch that one. We do need to watch that one. Uh, yeah, Kevin Stewart and Jim, uh, sorry, and Jordan Downey, uh, they uh, went to high school together. They were friends and they've worked on literally everything together. Uh, their entire resume essentially is the two of them working together. So here we are in Ohio. Get your. Uh, Standard B-roll of students walking around. Uh, so uh, this reminds me so much of pretty much the beginning of any of the horror movies of our day. They went really out of their way to show all the the stereotypes and tropes of like the different, you know, you got the asshole guy, you got the jock, you got like the sweet girl, you got the slut, you got the nerd. Yep. It's kind of like how... Uh, Power Rangers works too. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's your slut. <laughs> there's just maybe you don't know. If she was a real slut, she would have got him out. Thanksgiving. <laughs> 
I thought I recognized her from something too, but I realized who she reminds me of. This weird sped up shot freaks me out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she reminds me of the girl who plays Rosa Diaz in Brooklyn Nine Nine, and she also plays, um, oh, what's her face in Modern Family? Sofia Vergara's sister in Modern Family. Oh, she looks a lot like her. Stephanie Beatrice, that's her name. So a lot of these guys knew each other in real life. Uh, Carl, uh, yeah, Billy and um, the other character. I've, I'm mixing up my characters right now. Uh, but the the nerd and the uh, the asshole kind of guy, they were best friends with Jordan Downey in high school. Oh, really? Yeah. And <laughs> It makes sense, actually, because their acting, mm-hmm. I think, is about the worst. Oh, is it the worst? I think this oh. is about the worst in this movie, which oh. makes it... All the better. Oh, don't don't shit on these poor guys. I'm not shitting on them. I love this movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. These guys are fantastic. Everybody does exactly what needs to be done for this movie to be what it is. Because if they were too serious, <laughs> this, w- this movie wouldn't work. You would think that it would just be... You would think it's just a low-budget attempt at Like he's a never good seen one. an arm before. Not a huge <laughs> arm. Hmm. He means his, his his penis, even though it's not a muscle. He's not the smart guy. We've we've established that. Yeah, so you'll figure it all out. They accept him pretty like he just gets introduced essentially, and he's like, "Okay, yeah, hop in the back of my jeep and come with us on this trip." He's been vouched for. Well, that's that, how it happens in school, though, doesn't yeah. it? You you just you just get introduced and you say, "Hey, get in my jeep," and people go, "Yeah." I don't care for the lack of safety though that their heads all come above the roll bar. <laughs> That's just something I know. All right, we're going to get into this character in a little bit when we have a little bit more time. But I will tell you that this actor's name is General Bastard. That's a fantastic name. It is. That's his. That well, that's not his real name. It's his stage name. He is a musician. But uh, yeah, that's that's where we start with him. Uh, we will. My get dad into... has that same tattoo on his arm. Does he? Oh, I've never noticed that before. And your dad is a general bastard. <laughs> what? Why, why were they putting the roof on? I don't know. It's, they've. I have a feeling that they just probably were shooting and then forgot to take it down when they were shooting. So then they just did an establishing shot putting them up. That uh, would be that my makes guess. Sense. Yeah. Or the or the sound of because they're driving in faster speed now. They're probably the wind was probably too much. So yeah. <laughs> when you watch the trailer for this, they actually uh, like bleep a lot of the words. So that was one of the things. I guess there's no real uh, red band trailer or any of those kinds of things for these. I don't know why it was bleeped and stuff, though, but that's just, it is what it is. Hmm. <laughs> Not gay at all. I like him a lot. He, uh, I, I wish, honestly, that I saw him in more stuff. Uh, He's just, I find him very, very funny. He does remind me very much of a Power Ranger, though. Like, if if somebody, if he was, like, the Red Ranger in the original one, Absolutely, I'd, yep. I'd be totally right on board. I don't know that his karate's up to par, but I also don't know that the original Red Ranger's karate was up to par. That's right. I'm calling out the Red I Ranger. I love that his flashback to his <laughs> memories of his time with his dad were wearing the exact same clothes that he's wearing right now. I <laughs> and he's the exact same age as he is right now. They didn't even yeah. try to make him look younger. Well, they they stopped on that. That was when he put up the roof. He saw his dad and played a quick game of catch. And then <laughs> you remember that time? <laughs> oh, he's going to go wild. Oh, my God. I love. Oh, as opposed to the skinny dipping with clothes on. I don't know the decisions they make for his. He's going to have dialogue. sex, honey. I hope so. Oh, in this car with somebody in this car. I like that it's not even one of the women in this car. He's not even <laughs> he's not establishing himself as anything. He's just like whatever. Uh, and oh. it's and it's not going to be with his hand. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the facial expressions I love in this movie, especially especially your backseat people here, and just. <laughs> <laughs> As she flashed her boobs. Ah, she flashed her bra. That's not that hoish. 
If she's all with Johnny, then why is she not sitting in the front seat? I'm yeah, I was weirded out about that when I was rewatching it. Like, cause we had had a period of time where we hadn't seen it in a little while. And then I saw, and then I finally watched it and I noticed that. And I'm like, wait, what are they supposed to be established as, as boyfriend, girlfriend? Or is it just, no, it's just everybody wants him. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay. Uh, oh no, this isn't in the time I want to do. This is the resurrection scene of Turkey. Um, you're going to hear Jordan Downey's voice for the first time. It does not sound like it did in the interview. Obviously, he's doing a voice in it. Uh, but the basic idea, as you will get more of the backstory later on, is that he was uh, like consecrated by like a shaman, or like like I said, like a like an elder, some kind of native elder. And for some reason, this brings him back to, well, this doesn't bring him back to life. It just coincides with him coming back to life. I'm pissed. He made a very special effort, he said, to uh, throw in a lot of those one-liners. He wanted a very Freddy Krueger kind of feel, especially yep. around the murder scenes. I can really pick that up, actually. I think this is one of my favorite scenes, actually. I absolutely love this. I didn't ask him about the woman in this scene. I just assumed she was a relative. <laughs> this is Chuck. That's Chuck Lamb who plays the sheriff. And that's a wonderful fake mustache, but. <laughs> <laughs> this is how that I. That seemed to just come out of nowhere. <laughs> I know. See, but the fact that you use Keurig makes this a really hard way for me to ask you for a divorce. Yeah, you're not getting a divorce, honey. You're oh, yeah, stuck with me. No, I'm gonna cut some breaks. It'll be fine. Oh yeah, so this is this is where you find it. That's his daughter. Yes. <laughs> He's a date awesome. <laughs> I like he ignores the beer and he's all over the tossing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh god. I love I, I like how they're what they're establishing here. I will tell you the first time I saw this, I didn't really put together what they were trying to do. And we'll put the pieces together together I still when we're don't think I know what they're trying to do. Uh, okay, you will you you'll you'll, you'll, you'll understand when we get there. Yeah. And and you'll feel because I, I when I was rewatching it by myself the one time I was sitting there and then I finally realized what the intent was and I felt really dumb and I admitted it to Jordan and he just kinda laughed at me. <laughs> Oh, oh. Uh, this is another car thing, trouble. man. Jeeps are not uh, reliable. Always got car trouble when mm -hmm. you're watching a, when you're in a scary movie. Spend the extra money, get a Land Rover. This is one of those uh, situations uh, that's very problematic for lighting because you have to basically, they have to have like fake lighting. You want to be, like have, you would want it to look like it's all natural light, but there's no street lights there. So they're literally probably just shining another like set of headlights on them <laughs> she seemed really happy that they're broken down Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> he just did like the doyo like uh <laughs> like finger spin yeah uh, the last person i can think of who did that was uh biz markey and what movie was that I have no idea what you're talking about, but that's okay. Uh, They're going to party tonight. They're going to well, stay here and party. Well, would you rather them stay here and pray? Let's just all like have a prayer circle. A Scientology circle jerk or something like that. I don't know what Scientologists do. I imagine that's probably mostly that. It's... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the moon. It's a full moon. You know what happens on a full moon. Werewolves, not turkeys. No, crazy that would have been a happens. that would have been a great thing to. Uh, why do they? Why does he have a pillow? Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say. I don't. Where understand. did the pillow come from? Yeah, he well, didn't have a pillow when he got into the jeep. I don't know. Maybe there's just bonus pillows in the jeep. Oh, good thing he discovers this because nobody else would have known anything about it. Crawl. <laughs> and that, that that's how we teach our children to read, by the way. Yeah, we crawbird. Oh, well. He believes there's a chance somebody doesn't know <laughs> how to do it. And he's like, oh, crawbird. <laughs> uh, I, 
I really, really love, I spend so much time, now that I've seen this movie so many times, I don't even look at their faces anymore. I'm looking at their bodies and their show, like their body language and like the moves that they're making. And I was like, I picture because like being not experienced actors, you have that thing. It's always that joke that actors say when you like don't know and they're like, what do I do with my hands? Or like every decision that they're making to turtle their hair or the way they point. It's just, I... It's very funny. Oh Giant my god! Nipples. I was gonna say, yeah, the uh, and weird belly button, honey. Look at that belly button. Oh, do not care for the belly button. Can you talk again? I think you just screwed it up. Hello. Yeah, you screwed it up. <laughs> there you go. Try again. I just hit the wire on the microphone. Yeah. Carrie's causing technical difficulties. Oh, also. look at that! More, more boobies. My God, the uh, the pilgrimist chicks were like super horny. That's probably why they. Uh, it's probably why they overpopulated overpopula- so quickly. They just like, spread and spread and spread. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I like that it's every 505 years yet. Mm-hmm. No, never mind. My math's wrong. I'm stupid. Why? What were you going to say? Well, it was 1621. I was thinking every 505 years. This is the first time he came back. How did they know it's every 505 years? Yes. But No, my math was wrong. No. But he also, he, he knows the lore. We didn't have the lore uh, available to us. <laughs> they have so much, like, basically where they were sitting is where all that stuff should have gone. Like, they've got several tents, and they had bedding, and they had... Yeah. They maybe, got coolers. Maybe that's why they were sitting up so high, because they were sitting on top of all that shit. Maybe. Mm-hmm. It's so weird. We have a friggin' van and can't pack for four people. Oh, my without God. filling the kids' space in. Yeah, how, how did they do that in a Jeep? I don't know. Maybe maybe like the wheel well of their, like that tire in the back. They stuffed that with <laughs> tents. Oh, there are we. <laughs> this reminds me a lot of, uh, I made a movie in high school with, um, with Todd and, uh, the re- and members of our class. Uh, our media class and stuff like that. And we made this zombie movie and it just started with all of these kind of uh, expository, di- like ridiculous conversations. Like we had the, uh, the projector, the projectionists of uh, doing a zombie movie. And one guy like nudges the other and goes, thank God something like this could never happen. Like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the sounds and, just they it's a really important thing okay so the here's general bastard again i really want to talk about general bastard i let's listen to jordan tell us a little bit more about how he came across this gentleman how does uh, <laughs> how does general bastard come become a part of this movie well ryan francis who plays darren mm-hmm. is a huge part of you know a, a bigger part of thanksgiving than just being in it because mm-hmm. he was the first well first of all i went to high school with him so oh, we okay. were friends from you know, middle school through high school. So long story short, Ryan knew General Bastard because he was General Bastard, whose real name is Dean, wears this like luchador mask and he and, and camouflage. And if you look him up online, you can see his music and his stage presence and all that. I saw some of it last night. Of, you did? Okay. Yeah. So you know, you know the gist of it. But Ryan was like, hey, I know this guy because Ryan was in a punk rock band. And he told us, hey, I know a guy who's in Detroit. He has long hair. He might be perfect to, you know, without saying so, like he might be the perfect hermit kind of guy. And so he, Dean drove down, you know, a six hour drive or so to get down to us and stayed. Uh, we put him up in a hotel for a couple of days and he shot all of his stuff in just a few days. Yeah. So that is General Bastard. I just, I had one of those like aha freak out kind of moments when I was researching the movie and you're seeing these names and sometimes you see in horror movies like this, you'll people use like kind of crazy pseudonyms and stuff like that because they will work on higher end stuff and whatever and they don't want this to become a part of their resume or whatever. So I thought maybe that was the case. And then I started looking into him and found out he was that musician and Wanda Lust I thought was the same thing. I I legitimately didn't know she was a porn star. And then I looked up and she has an IMDB and then it was all like MILFs and like blah blah blah. Like that was like everything she had ever done was something that was definitely a porno. And I'm like, okay, we've worked that out. She was in that other one that we watched, right? Um that other porno? No. <laughs> Anna, Anaconda. 
No. Um, the, the one with in Piranaconda. The, Piranaconda. No, that wasn't her. That was. That- no, she the girl who in question was not a porn star. Uh, so you can see now the construction of the uh, turkey. He gave it more of a vulture look because he didn't like the, uh, like he's like turkey isn't particularly like scary, but the body of the turkey is actually one of those like decoy turkey things for like hunting. So that's how like he's got a hole in it and then just like the turkey head and then the rest is just a fake. So, see, I, I when I saw the turkey head for the first time, yeah. all I could think of is it looks like a herpes penis. <laughs> herpes covered penis. Oh, my God. Uncircumcised. I am really, really, really questioning some decisions that I've made. <laughs> now, we've had kids together, so that means I think I have herpes. <laughs> I just broke Carrie's brain. <laughs> it happens quite easily. Yeah, just I, go to bed. Everything will be okay. You're in a tent. Nothing can happen. You in well, a tent. I just also like the idea that they didn't believe it when it was a story. When she says she sees it, they're like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. It's probably fine. <laughs> it's probably nothing. I love that the, the guy is just... I love that the guy is just laughing over there in the corner about it and everything. He's the one who had the whole story about it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. I, I like that it had a weird scream too. <laughs> and again, just this dialogue. I, this is exactly the type of thing. And this is why I think that um, I gravitated towards this movie too. This reminds me a lot of when like Todd and I were doing like kind of fuck around writing and stuff like that. That was our dog making that noise. That wasn't the bunny being thrown in the fire. Um, Sorry. But yeah, she usually has my attention when yeah. he's recording these things and she's a little upset that she does not have my attention. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's like you, you put something like this together and if you see Jordan's other stuff too, you have to realize that other than thanks killing three, none of the movies are like this. He makes like legitimate, like horror movies and they wanted to make like this spoofy thing. So I just picture the concept of just sitting around and just syncing up the weirdest, craziest, most ridiculous shit you can as kind of the dream. If I were more, uh, I don't know, creative with that kind of stuff, I yeah. think that would be really fun. But oh, God, yeah. I just, I can't mm. seem to come up with anything. Mm. It's okay. That's what my job is. I just have to do it twice as much now, which actually puts me on some kind of like autism spectrum. Yeah, but our children are are very much like you, so. Autistic? Yes. Oh, no. That's so expensive to take care of. My mom just let me go in the woods. Nothing like waking up with a guy and a gun hanging out over you. I know. I saw a video just recently again, too. I forgot about it. It was somebody doing a prank and literally woke a guy up with like a pistol in his face. Oh, that's Unloaded, but like just like. Doesn't (laughs) matter. Those are marshmallows rolled in like cocoa? That's exactly what those looked like. Yeah. That's funny. I like this guy. They knew. I. They. The only person who would have been more like automatically suited for this role would have been Ted Nugent. Because he like already looked like this. They had to make him look like this. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The most extreme close ups in this, too. Yep. Mm hmm. Well, it's a lot of two. I don't know where exactly they're shooting in Ohio, and I'm wondering if maybe there's coverage that like they couldn't get, like you would see other things or whatever. Yeah. I do know the Wanda Lust chase scene. They legitimately uh, they shot it in California. Like they said, they shot it in California with no permit. So literally, she's just running around topless in the woods in like a like a park. <laughs> it's a pretty yeah, uh, great thing. So this is another good one, too. Like, they just, they started up. Yeah. Well, he gave it a tap or whatever. He's got, I can't remember the actor's name. There was this, uh, like, Canadian show that used to be on. Ryan Gosling was in it. I think we were on, like, a cruise ship or something like that. It was, like, very, like, sweet life on deck. 
but it wasn't that. It was a school, though, and there was one character who like reminds me so much of him. So just do that deep uh, IMDb dive, folks, because I gave you almost nothing to work with. Just go through Ryan Gosling's things from his early career that you didn't hear of and start clicking on them. <laughs> and then find a tiny picture of a little fat dude. <laughs> The old hermit saved him. Nice. Nice. <laughs> You're, why, why is he a freak if she believes him is the big. <laughs> I would have liked to have actually seen him drool just once if he was going to constantly be walking, like wiping away his drool. Yeah. Or for it to come into play, like if like the turkey like pinned him down and was trying to get him and there was just drool everywhere and he's like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been funny. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a uh, very specific Freudian slip. Yep. Uh. See, it looks like I, it doesn't look like there was anybody in the Jeep, like for those drive past. Oh, yeah. God, this is another great scene. I forgot oh, about this when it came yeah. out. Are you remembering it? I'm remembering it now. Oh, good God. So, this is the hitchhiker scene. <laughs> this guy he looks a lot like the nerd character as well like so it's like it makes me think has gas or grass <laughs> yeah turkeys are among the more fuckable fowl yeah this, uh... <laughs> <laughs> He had a shotgun handy as well, which was kind of nice. Yep. <laughs> I, w I I almost pictured, too, She was he was going to call and then it was going to be the other girl. I'm like, oh, that's convenient. Yeah. This is a specifically murderous turkey. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, sweetie. Oh, God. I have a... Very specific amount of jealousy that I'm not in this movie. And I had it in me to ask Jordan if you ever made a movie. Like, again, not knowing the rest of the body of his work prior to, like, when I started doing my research in that, I was kind of, like, if this is the kind of movie he's doing, I was going to say, hey, if you're ever shooting kind of in the area, I'll make the drive. <laughs> <laughs> kind yeah. of thing, right? Because I this is this is a dream to be in a movie like this. But you I'll put it out very well in something like this. I'll put it out to you, Jordan. If you're shooting something, we're we're in uh, the Niagara region of Ontario, southern Ontario, Ohio, just like what, about eight hours away. I'll make that drive. Just saying, you're ever shooting something, you know? I work cheap. I work cheaper than these guys. I bet. I've always been told she I'm a cheap date. What? She she. <laughs> she she was saying the entire time how she wanted to get with Johnny and how she was Johnny's girl and everything else. So why are they all surprised? I know, right? That is if, like I do love that line. Her legs are harder to <laughs> to shut than a chimney. Although it should be harder to close, but this is I thought it did say close. No. I'm just hearing what I want to hear, I guess. Mm -hmm. He looks like he's blindfolded there. Yeah. So he made his way out of the woods, and now he's just going to walk down the road. <laughs> oh, he's a Terminator, baby. <laughs> with a <his> shotgun. <laughs> yeah, that's the original hobo with a shotgun. He has that look of every teenager in anything from the 90s, where he just looks a little too old to be what he is, like, like yeah. what he's playing and stuff like that. But it's still acceptable for some reason. I occasionally fool myself into thinking I would look like that, but I'm 37 years old. I don't look anything like I did in college. You do. It pisses me off. You have wonderful skin. Fuck you. Oh, hi, sweetie. What are you saying? I like th this is uh, this is a very audio uh, like audible medium. You have to like say words. No, I know, but I'm I'm trying to not look like an asshole wife right now. Ah, just be an asshole. It's it's way better, and it's be it's better for the podcast. Are you not thirty eight? Wow, wow. Joe Finley was before was born December sixth, nineteen eighty one. 
So December 6th. I, no, no, no. Okay, I need to explain this for a second. I'm sorry. Holy fuck, guys. I was born in the beginning of January in 1980. He was born in the beginning of December in 81. So even though there's only a calendar year between our birth dates, it's actually almost two years between our birth yes. dates. And it always confuses me. And I don't know why. Oh, wow. I don't know what I'm owed when this recording is done, but I'm sure I'm not going to get it. <laughs> oh, this is that's heart- the only way a father would love a son. Well, I like, well, I'll tell you right now, like my son who is four years old is not the starting quarterback for any team. I secretly not a fan of his. I was like, if Best start- son anyone could ask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dad. Whoa. I don't mind the effects that they did with the human. Like that that's pretty like like for the budget and stuff like that, it's oh, yeah, pretty that was, respectable. Yeah. It's I don't oh, know why her, she's standing. Her eyes are pecked out. Yeah. It would <laughs> Oh what? What? Yeah, because <laughs> pumpkin pie is the first thing right. that you can What's the for? most ridiculous thing you would miss me for if I was if I was killed? Like, like, it's not like, like if you were yelling something out like this. The fact that I would probably not have Pepsi in the house anymore. <laughs> and then one night I would just want one. And that's the thing too. Okay. We need to, this is the most important scene of the entire movie. Yeah. We need to talk all about this and we start right now. Uh, this is the sex scene of the movie that's coming up. We're on the guys right now, but we can go to it. And here is Jordan telling us all about this. How could you make a horror movie without the notorious sex scene? There's always the shower scene or the nudity. And so we felt like we had to have that. But I don't remember like how we came up with the idea for the scene. I think it was Kevin and I just kind of talking about it. And yeah, I mean, we were never not going to shoot it because it was so ridiculous. And the way it was handled, like a clothed sex scene is even more ridiculous. <laughs> And the way that in Turkey saying you just got stuff and filming it was ridiculous uh, <laughs> because Natasha really didn't want to do it. No. Uh, and I don't blame her. You know, it's awkward and it's, it's weird. So like we knew that like finding somebody who was going to be fully nude for that scene was going to be tricky. And in the end, we didn't really care because it didn't really distract from just the, the ridiculousness of the final punchline. But then she, you know, understood the, the joke of it and we and we all became friends throughout making the thing. So we were, you know, I think we filmed that closer toward, towards the end. But for the close-ups and stuff, it wasn't really the turkey puppet. Like, it, there was, like, pillows that we had kind of made a fake. We put her wardrobe on sort of these pillows that we mocked up to look like a dummy. So it was just me and Kevin with the turkey puppet uh, in the bedroom. There wasn't really Natasha there. So we made it as, like, comfortable and, and light harder as possible but yeah it was just like i said it was just too ridiculous to not put into the movie and yeah it's you know become one of the most you know memorable scenes of the whole thing and my only issue with the scene it's hilarious and all that my only issue is that obviously the blood squirt was supposed to be like the cum on her back but i'm like how much would she have felt that with a shirt on yeah (laughs) That was a fantastic scene, oh though. I, that God. one kills me every time we watch it. And I remember, too, just wait, like our faces. Because I, I often look over to you and see kind of where what you're thinking and stuff when we're watching a movie like this. And I remember your face was thinking exactly what I was thinking. And it was just, oh, my God, is this going to happen? Is what I think going to happen? Going to? <laughs> oh, my God, it's happening. It's in the middle of happening. A gravy-flavored condom. <laughs> Hey, because so this isn't a roasted other... turkey, why didn't he just go in raw? High five. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Why didn't the other three go home? We only saw her get dropped off and then Johnny go home and see his parents. And I... now we don't see the rest of them go home. I don't know. That is actually a wonderful question. <laughs> I like... Everything we've thrown at him. What have you thrown no, at him? That's what he just said. He just said, we haven't done anything yet. <laughs> Uh, fucking eat him. <laughs> the, the books. Yeah. These are some of, the, we got some montage scenes coming up that are some of my favorite things in this movie. That's the one thing, got to give these guys a lot of credit because a movie like this really 
easily gets masked as just like a bad B movie. But there's a lot of thought that clearly went into this. And when I was speaking with Jordan, which is why I want you guys to hear the whole interview too, is you can hear the thought that actually went into making this movie what it was. If it was a little bit higher budget, I think that maybe the jokes would have probably played even that much better just because then you wouldn't have had the mistake of just thinking, oh, these guys are just making a shit movie type thing. So it, it's it, it's worth knowing that these guys did a wonderful, wonderful job with their with the jokes they decided to tell or like the tropes they decided to play on. Because you got all these things, you've got the curses, you got. So now here's the scene we were talking about. Here's what they're trying to establish, and we'll we'll complete the thought when we get there. So now we have the sheriff who is dressed like a turkey for a con for a contest. Oh. oh. Right. So now uh, we'll we'll complete this thought in just a little bit. But um, this is wonderful. I love that he thinks that Turkey is a real person. Oh, he thinks he's a midget. This is another one. We've got a Jordan talking about this scene specifically. It's actually surprisingly improv. So let's hear what they've got to say about this. That hazelnut scene was mostly improvised, like where they're talking about hazelnut and how old are you? And because Turkey says, what he says something about like are you he says fuck about something but i forget what line and then he says you're too you know you're not old enough to say fuck that whole thing was improvised and we were i mean we, we held it together for the take but afterwards we were all in tears so it it's it's nice to hear that that was your reaction too because it was all of our reaction there while making it we were laughing so hard chuck who played the sheriff and me and Kevin and everyone else, the whole crew and cast is there, you know, watching because we've been filming all day. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It is such a funny scene to just have a lull with a bad guy. It makes me picture like having this with, uh, let's say, uh, like, let's say like Jason just having like a sit down, like waiting in the waiting room kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh-oh. You don't call a turkey a duck. Yeah, they're not fans. They're not a fan when you call them a duck. But they're what not it, a duck. But what it seems to me is he was not going to murder him. Yeah, he was until that happened. Him, I was he like, called you, him a duck. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Why would you assume? Well, I guess what you assume gets thrown at the window in a movie like this. But I was going to say, why would you assume that he's coming after your dad? Like, how would he even know? Right. But again, how did he find everything else as well? So yeah, let's uh, suspend a little disbelief for the Turkey murder. I'm also shocked at how all the teenagers knock to get into their parents' houses. Nobody just walks into their parents' house. That's actually a really great thought. All right, so here we go. And here was the piece that I never put together. This hilarious thing. We're just sitting there laughing at the idea that she's mistaking a turkey for the dad. But then I never put the pieces together that he was dressing like a turkey for the thing. So somehow that that would track for her that he would also look like a turkey. Yeah, yeah. And that I just... Uh, I don't know. It makes me want to die on so many levels, but <laughs> would you mind showing us to the garage? Yeah, this is my home. Garage. Can you tell me where, where the garage? You can... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Just that, that allows them to forgive just a little bit more. Uh, they did base this just on a very simple like idea of like leather face. Yeah. It's just him like stealing the face. Oh. I don't know why his face was so small that it could only cover a turkey head, but Yeah. <laughs> I like that he has an extensive book collection, but it's just somewhere amongst the boxes in the garage. <laughs> like And they're just hoping that he might have something yeah. on this specific yeah. turkey. Well, he's got an extensive book collection, not just like a casual book collection. So yeah, that's probably I I know I have a couple of like humorist books about like murdering turkeys. <laughs> Lewis Black wrote one. But uh <laughs> Exactly. 
He also because he loves turkeys so much that he's dressed up like one currently. Yeah. Here's the <laughs> montage. But the uh this one's like extra good just because <laughs> Just like the the little steps they make. And again, it's just the fun ideas of this is a freedom that you have when you're making a movie like this kind of like guerrilla style with like no real, no real financial backers or anything like that. You can just think up the dumbest stuff, the funniest stuff or whatever, and just do it without anybody being like, you know, you got to stop. <laughs> Taught oh, him how to read quick. Helping him, helping him read. Yeah. Hmm. I like like you would think at the very least you'd be able to look at a book and then determine that this is probably not the book I'm looking for. Yeah. Like there's one that's like about like great boxers of like the early 18 early 19th century or something like that. It's like I oh, probably no turkey murder in this book. Yep. But everybody's reading every book. It would be actually funny to find out that like several months had passed. I was going to say they 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 all read pretty fast considering Yeah. how many books they went through. Yeah. Should have come and looked for the audiobooks. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes to look at all those books. Yeah. Well, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> I love just like the quality of that book too. It looks it looks like just a tattered whatever. It's just something they printed and like threw on top of another book. Yeah. <laughs> I should have asked about the like he is obsessed with those super duper close ups. Again, I think it's just a coverage thing because they're sitting so tight together that like they probably weren't standing together when they were doing those coverage shots. So yeah, <laughs> I love. Oh god, I just like the concept of in this book. There's a way to kill magical turkeys and. There's and a, it's a math, mathematical yeah. well, everything's code math. that needs to be cracked. Remember contact? Everything's math. Oh. <laughs> I'm hungry too, actually. Yeah. Oh, the pizza wasn't enough for you? No. I made We, we made uh, margarita pizzas today, and they were delish. But apparently not enough for, everybody, for anybody. Everybody was still hungry. <laughs> He's doing math in his head. Be quiet. Yeah, that seems a bit much to do the math in the head. That wasn't actually too bad either, the face peel makeup. It, the, yeah. It really didn't look any... Like, that looks no worse than uh, uh, Nicolas Cage in Face Off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have there? What's that large body-shaped thing? <laughs> it would have been funnier if he still didn't work out that he was turkey. <gasps> the reveal... The reveal. Here it is. Here it is. <gasps> oh. It is turkey. Did not see that coming, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> they do hit a lot of uh, language that doesn't, that like, probably wouldn't even, even have flown back then. But whatever. It's already happened. <laughs> Casino. <laughs> it almost did. <laughs> Prepared to be dead. I like that he they they almost kind of like solved the Native American like racist cr race crisis. Uh, I'm terrified of large birds. I've shared stories before about how geese have run me off of bike trails and all these other things. I've had geese attack me while I've been riding my bike, like attacked my tires and knocked yeah. me off the path and everything. See, I yeah. hate geese. And it's the same bike trail, right? It's yeah, that, it's like, the well and along the well and canal. Yeah. And yeah, they just sit along there and anytime people come, they just come at them and there's this long, steep drop off on the one side in this one area. And I got like knocked down that way and I went like down at like friggin' Daniel LaRusso and the karate kid and i was like oh did the cobra kai attack you no a couple of fucking geese i'm a man <laughs> like <laughs> do your magic it is a teeny tiny paperback book like you would think they would have gotten like a big like something that looked like ancient it looks like they picked that up just at like some like used bookstore 
Well, I think they were going for something that looked old, and I think they just found something that was old, and they worked yeah. with what they had. But I just mean, like, if something that was written like that wouldn't have been written and then released in a paperback version. It would be, like, written in skin. Yeah. <laughs> they do go through a lot of emotions in a very short period of time. He's he's kind of on the, the tail end of mourning the death of his parents. Yep. And, uh... <laughs> She knows football. It would have been way better if he didn't understand. And she's like, see, this is why you weren't the starting quarterback. <laughs> like, Audible, what are you talking about? I'm pretty sure I've fallen asleep during this part of the movie. Yeah. Well, you've seen it more than once. It's true. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, you were almost, you almost kissed lightly on the lips. I apologize. The lighting is, uh, once again, something I'm very much noticing because this was shot on 35 millimeter film too, right? So it really picks up the uh, the graininess if in in darker uh, in darker light. Burn this like day. a witch. <laughs> <laughs> the- Just your usual thing. <laughs> They should have had another montage here of him, of them learning the Oh, that would the have been incantation. Awesome. Just boop, 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 boop. And then just like all like practicing it together. You see one person screws it up and like, ah. He's got the... <laughs> Uh-oh. If he's not in the TV. <laughs> one of your friends. This is very specific. It would have been great if it was just one of your friends, but then said it like called him by name. Yeah. So, wow, this is a specific ass. <laughs> oh. This is, this by is the great. way, our son when he gets his hunger pangs. Yeah. This is how, so this is essentially how he's gonna die, wandering the streets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the animated. A here from him to eat. Yeah. The uh, the animated uh, portions of this I find very very funny. <laughs> I don't know why it's uh, like Revolutionary War music that he's hearing when he's it's very American. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have a beard like that. I'm just putting it out there. Oh. 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 See again, a pretty decent effect. I just. <laughs> he where does he him keep right down with the gun yeah turkeys must be very thin there it is that's actually <laughs> on the cover as well <laughs> <laughs> foul play there's uh, again like they, they did a very good, they did a wonderful job with that with those lines they're exactly what you want them to be because if they were again if they were too good like there's such a balance in this if, if anything's too good in this movie the movie doesn't work if anything's too bad in this movie it doesn't work well that's true with any movie like this that we enjoy there's a perfect balance of <laughs> yeah. complete absurdity yet yes oh man and this leads us to another uh Another uh, discussion with Jordan. Uh, we discussed the montages in this movie, and here comes the, probably the great montage <laughs> to end all montages. Uh, so let's hear what Jordan has to say about this. The best friend Billy montage was just, we liked the idea of there being some kind of a musical number, mm-hmm. but we didn't have the lyrics and the idea of there being like a singer over top of it. I think it was just, let's, we're just going to go and have this montage like where his friend has da- died and then we're going to see flashbacks of them you know, hanging out at the park and the playground and just doing absolutely ridiculous stuff. But, you know, filming it was just fun. It was just a couple of us with the camera out at these parks and Ryan and Carl, you know, pushing each other on the swings and the slides and, 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 and having fun. And then, you know, where it really cheeses up is just with those cross dissolve. But with that one, yeah. So I remember then in... And when we were editing it, we just needed a really cheesy piece of music over top of it. And I forget what we found. It was some royalty-free thing that we ended up finding. And while that was playing on loop, 
I kind of just started like joking around and kind of like singing a tune to it. Um, and then it was, it kind of just started to stick and we were like, oh, this is hilarious. There should be this like godlike voice that just comes in and sings this song out of nowhere. And, <laughs> and then Kevin ended up doing the singing, uh, of the song. Um, and, and it's hilarious. <laughs> it, it's a classic moment. Oh man. And yeah, it's, I, I do love a good montage and this one is just ridiculous. And just the idea that they just kind of ran out there and just kind of like, you know, dicked around for a little while. Like picture that when you're shooting a movie, like you, the, the answer to how was this made is never, oh yeah, we just went out there and screwed around. Maybe if you're shooting on digital or something like that, or if you've got like real, like Apatow money or something like that, but like not when you're like on a super tight budget and you're shooting on film, it's just bananas. But yeah, so the, like they said, um, uh, Kevin Stewart there was the one who did the <laughs> the uh, music uh, or the lyrics for that, and it's just perfectly funny. And they left him there. They just leave him dying yeah. on the side of the road. Well, they got they got turkeys to catch. That actually is a pretty cool shot. It's like this weird, like, fear and loathing in Las Vegas kind of shot. <laughs> He's eating healthy, though, so I appreciate that. <laughs> For fire and fiber. <laughs> um, interesting, too, is... From a puppet making standpoint, yeah, this oh, is look, the first, there's a teepee. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, <laughs> from a puppet making standpoint, it's um, like this one was made again, like I said, by uh, Jordan Downey. But the uh, as they evolve, uh, he actually makes a Critters fan film years and years later, and the puppet that they made for that, which was also made by the guy who did the special effects for this movie, the puppet was so good that I legitimately thought. It was from, like, they actually got the actual critters from critters. Like, they, like, found, they got permission to use them and went to, like, a soundstage or wherever they're being stored and actually got them. They were that, like, that accurate. But, again, I think that's a testament to him liking those movies. Oh, the dog's trying to speak. My, do my dog might speak for the first time on this podcast. But you got something to say, Leah? <gasps> say something. Say something. Oh, God, we have a stupid dog. Her dog's so dumb. She can't even talk. <laughs> I like TPs are also, uh, you know, frighteningly not soundproof. Yeah. So it's like they're just game planning her out. Oh, the TP. <laughs> they're coming from all angles, too. I thought there was only one entrance. Although it's, uh, it has a little bit of the, it has that feeling of, um, what is it? Like the undetectable extension charm in, uh, Harry oh, Potter, yep. where it's just, a, seems a whole lot bigger on the inside. Than... Yep. <laughs> oh, it's good to be invincible. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's not fight. Again, turkeys fight hard. Oh, yeah, they're, they're I, 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 I picture that they would be very much like fighting a goose. Turkeys are monsters. And that's why, like, once they, I, like, it all made sense to me once I heard that uh, dinosaurs potentially evolved into a lot of types of birds and stuff like that. Yeah. I was like, that makes perfect sense because they're all fucking monsters that are trying to kill us. It's true. Mm -hmm. Anything larger than a chicken is just trying to murder us. And a chicken will fuck you up still, too. <laughs> Are, are you ready? <laughs> when did they take the time to learn this? Like on the drive over or? Yep. And why does it have to be backwards? Because that's what the math said. No, I know that, but it's just like, like you would think the incantation would just like, wouldn't this just technically be forward? <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> there, we did it. Now he's not invincible. That's good news. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like we could have like delved so much deeper into it. His real backstory was like, and you find out he, like, 
Well, he you he is essentially kind of like the spirit of some whatever Native American and that. Like they they kind of like got that down, but it would be cool if like even in this movie or in the sequel or something like that, like that spirit escaped. There you go. General bastard back in town. Oh. What? Chains? I, I was trying to re- read what so was something on the about chainsaw. Yeah. His. I like that his teepee has little um, turkey marks, all, feet, feet marks, all, foot marks all over it. Oh, okay. I never noticed that, actually. <laughs> so you know that a turkey lives oh, there. Oh, yeah. No, that makes sense. Everybody's got to decorate, right? <laughs> that's that's either. it would have been really funny though i think the end of this movie should have been he gets away but then that guy who tried to have sex with him in the car gets him again he's like oh you again and he's like no and then just the implication is just that the turkey is gonna get raped and that's the end of but he killed the guy in the car oh we'll just put like a big thing on his face it's just like yeah he shot me through the cheek but i'm not dead <laughs> <laughs> uh the the voices that people decide to make again i did the in that high school movie i made i was the fixer and i was like this like un, like this operative who like did all kinds of like horrible things and blah 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 and then i end up having to like help like save everybody from the theater full of zombies and all that and i was just i remember when we were watching what it a back nice guy yeah what a, what a sweet fellow. But uh, I remember trying to watch it back, and I'm just saying, like, why did I do a voice? Like, <laughs> you were getting into character. You needed to decide what the character yeah, I was guess. going to. My actor's secret was that I was an idiot. Nah, you're not an idiot. No, I was an idiot. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> High fives. <laughs> Again, I just, I, I, I don't know. I just anticipate stuff. Is like, what do you say? We go back to Christmas. You can watch us have sex. Yeah. Now so, you're and just it, gonna watch a movie. Her father's yeah. dead in the kitchen and mm-hmm. faceless. Yeah, I like the radioactive materials. Uh, a reason that. Uh, I, this is something I didn't know until more recently, but a reason that they can show Night of the Living Dead here is because Night of the Living Dead is actually public domain. Really? Yes. You do not have to pay to show it. Um, Todd and I have been talking about potentially doing a live episode somewhere, and it was the first thing that I thought of, actually, when I did that research. Was I was like, oh, let's see if we can find a decent movie in the public domain. That would be awesome. That's so, a great movie, too. Yeah. But we did the remake one as an episode. So we'll, we'll get to it eventually, but I think that that would be a decent way of, uh, dealing with that. (laughs) Oh, I would have liked just one person calling attention to like, are none of us concerned about all our dead parents? Yeah. And the fact that the other guy there is like almost sitting on top of Johnny. (laughs) I'm yeah. And I'm kind of down with that. See, see, it's just, (laughs) He's not even no like <laughs> Well he's good. No, you if they don't care, you hang out. That's you're you're of that age. You discover you know, you discover yourself. That's so weird. Ah. I'm just saying. They said they were gonna party and that feels like it's part of partying. <laughs> At least he washes his hands really well. Oh, fix that hair. What? Yeah. You have nothing on your face. You no, he's doing that thing. You know, you know, you just get some, splash some water on your face, get the stresses out. Oh. Shutting off the lights apparently turns the water off. It can. If you have a smart house, you set up IFTTT. <laughs> <laughs> the establishing shot of the things in the fridge. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Why was he 180 degrees? I don't know. That's way too hot. Yeah, it is way too hot. Maybe he's got malignant hyperthermia. <gasps> Ooh, that's actually a fun disease my wife has that we have to be wary of. Um, the basic idea of it is if she's put in the wrong scenario or if she gets like the wrong anesthetic gas or something, her body temperature just increases until her blood boils. 
Yeah, it's it's good times. Mm -hmm. So we have to only stay in first world countries, which means all of my dreams of going to nothing but third world countries on my vacations has been dashed just by marrying you. Yeah, well, I'm worth it. Man. All I wanted to do was just party in Kenya nonstop. Oh, look, his heart's still beating. Yeah. Oh, hey, that was fast. Well, remember when Kano rips out people's hearts? <laughs> oh, look, his friend's there. He's. It would have oh. been funnier if he was in hell. <laughs> he was just like, yeah. There's no turkeys up here, man. <laughs> oh. It's a wonderful moment. Oh, that's basically. That's half of our relationship right there is the, one, the the woman asleep on the man, but the man's still awake, unable to escape. And then I go, hey, you're sleeping. And she goes, no, I'm not. It's true. <laughs> I do say, no, it's not. No, I'm not quite often. Although sometimes I'm not lying. Sometimes the you're not. The majority of the time I am. I can always tell when you're lying. <laughs> you have never once fooled me. <laughs> no, no. I'm In good. my mind's eye, I have fooled you numerous times. <laughs> I felt pretty good about it. <laughs> Unless they get a bunch of <laughs> uh, nuclear waste or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Darren. It's okay to be like a little traumatized by turkey murder. And watching your father be murdered. And then yeah. seeing your mom's eyes pecked out. No, given the fact that he was such a dick about the whole quarterback situation, I think that that's probably fine. The mom I'd be upset about because she didn't seem to mind that he wasn't the starting quarterback. That's true, I guess. <laughs> I'm making a turkey sandwich. He said that he actually wanted somebody, like, he, he wanted to get, like, a real voice. He wanted, like, a Gilbert Gottfried or something like that to do the voice of Turkey. Oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah. I actually said I preferred, I was like, I feel like he would have been too distracting. If I was Gilbert Gottfried, I'm gobble gobble, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, poor Johnny. Mm -hmm. Those knives are like very terrible. I remember like my mom used to have one and it was like, it's the worst thing in the world. (laughs) Like they, they don't really do anything. It's like a it's like a reciprocating saw, like and oh, a vibrator like a, had a baby. The turkey laying in the sink looked like one of those fans that you get. Oh yeah, like the fold out yeah, fans. Fold out fans. Yes, the ones that poor people use or Why way is fancy his butt people. So dirty, leaving the house. Probably pooped himself. Right, or he backed into a, like a muddy wall. Ass first. That's also a possibility. <laughs> It makes me want to research and say, is that how turkeys see? Do they see like a monochrome? (laughs) My true weakness, aerosol and lighters. (laughs) Do feathers melt? (laughs) You should. I don't know. I feel like he's going to be okay. I feel Why like is it still in it. him? That's the other part, too. Well, you're not supposed to remove a weapon. No? It could be stopping the bleeding, so you're not supposed to remove something oh, like oh. that. He's dead. Oh. Oh, Turkey's still alive. <laughs> He's... You could burn him at the stake. That's right. It would have been funny if he just landed on a stake. Like just like a like a not like this, but like a, like an actual. Oh look, piece they of had meat. they had they had it already. What do you not have a pyre ready? I always have one ready. Because you why know, why was that different than just setting them on fire? Because you got to burn them at the stake. Technically, still didn't. That's not what that is. That's more of a funeral pyre. But I'll let it. Like if he got impaled by one, that's okay. <laughs> that was undercooked. I'd be afraid that I would, like, reincarnate the turkey and then I'd become the serial killer. Why would you eat that? The sequel should have been that her poop starts killing people. (laughs) That would have been amazing. Jordan, all of these ideas you can use. You're the only one who has permission. I'll sue anybody else. Jordan, thank you very much for that movie. Oh, man. Did you ask him about this scene? No, I didn't. Um... (laughs) 
<laughs> it's it's weird to me because you know what it actually reminds me of? It reminds me of one of those like eighties like movies, like film strips things that you would like watch in school. And like it would just be like you would have that like awful voiceover on top of it. it would be and the family eats the turkey to celebrate Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love the slow burn of this too. Like I, like you know what's about to happen or a version of what's about to happen, and you're, <laughs> you're just waiting for it. But the idea too is where did they get the like? Did they find this burnt turkey out on in the yard, or did somebody find it and decide to sell it in a grocery store. (laughs) All right. This is the best ending thing too. Like this is way better than the end with question mark to be continued in In space. space. Um, he does talk later about that in our interview as well. He'll talk a bit about that. But what was more interesting to me was when they were making this, they hadn't decided what holiday they were really going to do. And they were kind of like floating around on holidays. So I followed up with him to see if maybe we could ever uh, find them doing something else. And here's what he had to say about that. Is there ever a spot where it makes you kind of like think back and go, hey, maybe, you know, maybe one day when we're in the mood, maybe revisit another holiday one? Or have you kind of gotten past that now? I've done my Thanksgiving. (laughs) and I'm. I think, I mean, I don't know. At the same time, I love seeing like Krampus or Trick or Treat or some of the more like recent ones Mm -hmm. that have come out. Um, I still love the holiday horror film. And, you know, we're sitting here talking about it 10 years after it's come out. This is its 10 year anniversary, really. And uh, because the holiday thing, you know, it kind of just becomes this annual tradition for a lot of people. So that's pretty cool. I mean, there's always something special about revisiting your favorite holiday movies every season it, it just I guess it reminds you of your childhood and you want to show it to your kids or your friends and whatever so I don't know there's something pretty cool I, I've enjoyed the process of, of ha- contributing our little slice to that sort of holiday world but uh, I can't imagine doing it now or anytime soon and it just kind of feels like we did our thing and we we left our mark in our own way and um, I don't, I don't foresee myself, you know, wanting to do another holiday thing, but it would be, I'd be open to it if something, you know, the right thing came along or the right opportunity. So, yeah. And then on top of that, there was no serious, uh, want to make a sequel to this, but then when they decided to do it, they put up, um, they put up a, uh, Kickstarter for it and it was actually one of the highest, uh, fundraising kick the uh, kickstarters uh, for horror movies of that time now this was a while ago and kickstarters have become quite a thing since then but that's a pretty big thing they so they raised like a hundred dollars or a hundred dollars jeez a hundred thousand dollars to make the sequel to this and if you haven't seen it um i i had jordan try and tell me how to describe it to somebody else it's like it goes in such a different direction there's a lot of puppets in it like like muppet style puppets and it does take place in space uh wanda lust does return Ooh. as a uh a big titty to astronaut and so there's a lot to see in that one uh i do encourage you guys to go check out jordan's uh youtube page you can actually see uh, most of his movies on there directly. He's got his old films and he's got, uh, you can see trailers for other things that he's made. Uh, you can see the whole of his uh, Critters fan film, which I actually do recommend. It's only about seven minutes long or something like that. It's quite good though. And uh, find him on his website at jordandowney.com. And for us, we thank you. We give thanks to you on this Thanksgiving, U.S. Thanksgiving. Sorry, Canadian fans, not enough of you. If it was if if there were more Canadian listeners, which really hurts my fucking feelings because of the fact that I'm Canadian and like the amount of people who listen in Canada don't add up to the amount of people who love me. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm one of those people who love him but don't listen. We'll see. We'll see. She either listens or she doesn't love me. It's one or the other. But we thank you all 
so much. We hope you had fun with this episode. This was, this was a very special one. Please tune in next week to listen to the entire Jordan Downey interview. He is a really interesting dude, and it was a lot of fun to talk to him. And as always, find us on miscastcommentary.com. Email us, podcast at miscastcommentary.com. Find us on Twitter at miscastpodcast. I'm at JK Finley. Todd, who's not here, is at Miscast Todd. Carrie doesn't tweet, so forget it. You can find us on Instagram. I'm at JK Finley, and we are at Miscast Commentary. And so, yeah, like us on Facebook. Uh, make sure to check out to um, this week's episode of Dueling Decades. I was in that and joining the guys once again. I was battling on behalf of Thanksgiving week for 1990 and see what kind of fun things I picked out and see if I beat out uh, Thanksgiving week for 1983. Spoiler alert. It's a podcast. <laughs> that was my spoiler. I'm pretty good. Um so, for now, tune in next week. You'll hear the interview. You're going to hear some uh, miscast commentary archives. Todd will not be back just yet. He's going to be back the following week. And you'll hear more of us, you know, doing what we do. So, Carrie, you have anything else to say? Thank you for watching that movie with us. I love it. <laughs> can I go to bed now? Yes, you can, baby. See, look, it would... Yeah, we're doing just fine. All right. So for Carrie Finley, I am Joe Finley saying gobble gobble, motherfuckers. Have a great night, and we'll see you next week. This has been Miscast Commentary with your hosts, Joe Finley and Todd Murray. Executive producer, Joe Finley. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. Visit www.miscastcommentary.com for all news related to the podcast. Miscast Commentary is a Miscast Media Production. 